Frozen, Frozen, Heroes. Gonna tell you about Frozen, Frozen, Heroes. Gonna tell you about comic books, costumes, facts, boots, and other stuff. In this week's issue, Comet the Super Horse. Welcome into Bros, Foes, and Heroes. I am Zach, joined as always by Man Wonder Mike. Hello. MWM. It's been a couple of weeks. It has. Yeah. We, uh, last week, you got to hear a fantastic episode, a rerun, but that uh, Billy Ray Cyrus yeah, Marvel comics that yeah, are really good. It's a really good one. Uh, before that, we talked about Superman uh, stealing somebody's wife and uh, shooting a <laughs> porno with her, potentially. That was strange. And then we had some uh, public domain goodness before that. Today, um, we have another kind of strange tale. We're not focusing necessarily on just a, uh, I, I will give you the origin of this hero, if you will, but I'm okay. not going to break down his whole career. Yeah. Instead, we're going to focus on his dating life, which oh. is going to be very strange. I feel like we've run into a theme here. We ha Until... Uh, I explain who it is that we're covering. Oh, okay. Uh, because we're going to talk about Comet the Super Horse. Comet the Super Horse. All right. Specifically, Comet the Super Horse's dating life. And you might say, that's a strange thing to focus on. It is a little weird. But it came up multiple times because Comet the Super Horse can turn himself into a person. Oh, we'll break all of this down like that. when we talk about... Uh, just some of the shenanigans that happened in Silver Age Supergirl comics. Mm, Supergirl. Uh, Supergirl, basically, I think she made her debut in uh, around 1959. <laughs> uh, basically, everybody got tired of just having Superman, Super so Wars. we need to have Supergirl as well. Yeah. There's a lot of, I, I will go, because the best explanation sometimes is just to go to uh, Wikipedia to explain uh how things are and i will have to go to that when we get past silver age here because sure. there's a split there's basically our comet the super horse we're going to talk about in many ways in uh comic books they'll bring characters back eventually mm -hmm. but let's talk about comet the super horse's origin and to do that it's a very convoluted origin to begin with uh, in the issue before this, I have in front of me just uh, Action Comic number 293. 12 cents. 12 cents. Wow. Uh, that has the secret origin of Supergirl Super Horse. So this is 1960. Oh, I need to figure this out. It is 1962. 1962. October. So he first appears before his origin here mm. comet does mm -hmm. in adventure comics uh 293 and then his origin is given in action comics 293 uh adventure and action kind of split different that's what i was wondering tells. what's the difference yeah yeah so um action comics i feel like from all the ones that i've gone through for this it's split it's like the first part is a Superman story. Mm -hmm. The second part is a Supergirl story. So it's all anthology. I think, yeah, type. in a sense. I think uh, Adventure uh, Comics, there was also Supergirl stories. Yeah. But I think that it rotated then who was the other story. Adventure more. Comics sounds like Robin Hood to me. Action it, Comics it does. sounds like Superman kind yeah, of thing, yeah. you know? So, I didn't know if there was a but, So there. they kind of split between uh, the two. Uh, Comet was actually created by jerry siegel and kurt swan jerry siegel is part of the duo who created superman originally too mm, okay so he's back and working at dc around what is he is the happening. guy that get that never gets named for oh no that's batman yeah no it's batman that's, that's batman. bill finger which yeah so funny enough i guess i should mention i had planned this out to talk about comet and then yesterday i went with my brother and nephew to mm -hmm. go see the dc super pets movie oh boy so just not related at all but we're still talking about dc super i heard pets. there's a there's a credit scene at the very end is it a cartoon also it's all cartoon okay. all right um i could just see dc going nah let's throw some real people see, in at the end but it is kind of funny is it? I, I i will say 
So you, we waited for... I just can't get enough of The Rock these days. I mean, I, we need more movies with The Rock in it, I think, right? Really? I think we have No, enough. I'm just joking. Okay. It's, it's bullshit. Okay. I yeah, can tell too much be, of him. Too much. There is a lot. And that's the thing, too, is like... So, spoiler alert for the next, I don't know, 30 seconds or a minute if you don't want to hear this. But it's it's an after credit scene in DC Super Pets that has no <laughs> connection to anything. Plastic Man? Uh, no, Plastic oh, Man is not there. But so, at the very end, there's two after credit scenes. Yeah. So, like, we were the only, like, we went to see it at 945. In the morning? Yeah. Oh, wow. Which, hey, it's like, that's a $7 oh, ticket. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I think you can probably go before noon and still get it. But, sure. and there's not a lot of people there. It was, yeah, you know, I would it was imagine. Nice. That's cool. So, but we are the only people, the three of us in the stu- or in the uh, theater as like the full the credits, credits in. And yeah. it pops up. And uh, basically, so John Krasinski voices Superman in this. Mm. And The Rock voices Crypto, the super dog. Okay. All of a sudden, it's crypto. They're playing Doesn't fetch. Doesn't it seem like it ought to be the other way around? Yeah. Okay. But, uh, well, but Superman's not the main character in the DC Super Pets movie. Yeah, I get it. I just, Crypto's the main character. Just thinking about them in real life, it ought to be the other way around. Oh, just wait. Because okay. then Anubis shows up. Anubis. Who is supposed to be. A cat? No, it's a dog. It's a dog. Who is supposed to be uh, the pet of Black Adam. Oh. And so Black Adam shows up too. And don't worry, Dwayne Johnson voices both Black Adam and Anubis oh, thank God. and Crypto oh. all in the after credits scene. Thank God. But uh, that's I'm not. <laughs> Why did they even hire any other I, I'm actors? Not, I, I'm not dissing. I am. Dwayne, well, that's fine. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm not attacking him. And it's just weird to have the same person voice three characters in Get one on scene. this boat. Now fight this blade. Now it is be funny. a dog. It is a little funny because, <laughs> like, he talks about, Anubis basically talks about how his owner is an anti hero. Yeah. And Crypto, even though it's voiced by, uh-huh. it, it is funny in this instance where he's like, sounds like he's just a villain. Yeah. And he's like, no, he's an anti-hero. Huh. And he's like, nope, sounds like the same just, you know, justification. Thing. Right. So he's able to poke fun at himself, sure. which is nice. Yeah. Uh, it was funny. Um, yeah. It was funnier than a lot of the movie. Um, it does kind of feel like, though, that you could hire The Rock and um, Kevin Hart. And you could just do like 40 movies. Yeah. And like, that's you the know? thing is like, it's always, they're a solid duo. Um, but it's, it's a kid's movie. So it's yeah. just not as. I, again, I don't know if we've ever talked about this or not. I do not understand the hiring of superstars to voice animated characters. I don't get it. Why? We have talked about Why? this, I think. Yeah. yeah. I don't care. I, I don't mind it. I'm not going to see. Super pets because Dwayne Johnson is the voice of a dog. But some people are. Okay, well then they're. I, I know it's not you, but I think that some their people. Priorities. Well, that's you or know. something. <laughs> that's between them and, and their. That's life. between them but, and their god. <laughs> <laughs> which might be Dwayne the Rock Johnson. So of course they yeah, would care if he voiced it. Very solid point there. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, but. So let's let's keep talking about another. So wait a minute, super you, pet. You brought up the fact that you were that we've been off. For a couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah. But then you never said where we went or what we did. Uh, I want to have some small talk. Come on. Oh, you're going to force me to have small talk? Okay, let's see. <laughs> Where'd you go? I went you don't for have a to name family the place, vacation. I'm just saying. I went on yeah. family vacation. I went yeah. to the, the Texas Gulf Coast, which ah. you know is... Was it nice? Not. It's a Texas Gulf Coast, Mike. Was it clean? It's a Texas Gulf Coast. Fantastic. Um, I, I say that. It's just the water is obviously murky and yeah. brown. But... Yeah. Uh, it was it was humid. I, I had mm-hmm. fun. Like yeah. we, we had a blast Good. there, um, mainly just because hanging out with family and having yeah, fun. Yeah, sure. Um, you and your nine brothers. And- me and I only have two. Oh, I mean technically I have three brothers, but me and two went on this, and then a brother in law. <laughs> <laughs> He's do you half, have you, do you have three brothers? He's a yeah. Half so brother. two of them are twins. I have, I have then, younger twin, like full. So I, that's just one. Full brothers, right? The two of them to get no, no. <laughs> oh, okay. They uh they count as two full ones okay. because I know this because they would try to 
outnumber me. There's only yeah. a four year age difference. Oh, okay. And yeah. I was see, I've I've talked about this with people. I was too nice of a brother growing up. You know how you have do you have a brother? No, I do not. I don't have anybody. Oh, you're an only child. I killed my parents and now it's just me. All right. So uh <laughs> Michael Lizzie Borden. Uh hacked <laughs> away when I was only three <laughs> or something. I don't know. Man, that, that's kind of how did that thing go? I don't. I just remember it's like the number. She killed her parents. Forty and then forty one. Something, something and forty wax or something. something. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I don't. Remember. I remember that the the woman from Bewitched was in it, in the TV version of Lizzie Borden. The one who played Samantha. Mm-hmm. Really, I've never yeah, seen that. She played Lizzie Borden. I. I don't know if we've talked about this, and nobody probably cares. <laughs> what Lizzie Borden? Some, I don't no, think it's ever come up. No, no, no. It's even more obscure <laughs> than that. Uh, some of my first crushes were Barbara Eden in I Dream of Jeannie. But you were going to say Lizzie Borden. No, 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 no. <laughs> I love that I was, wacky you gal. Brought up, well, you brought up Bewitched, and so it made me yeah, think of sure. like, uh, TV Oh, yeah, Land Barbara Eden Nick and something Knight. else, yeah. But, so we watched a lot of I Dream of Jeannie, and yeah, like as like a five-year-old kid, oh, like sure. Barbara Eden, no belly button mm, at all. Five? So I was young. Dude, okay. I was, I'm, it never went away. Like huh. I still will watch I Dream huh. of Jeannie and be like, Barbara Eden. Yeah, I mean, that was one of the only belly buttons on TV, I think, at the time, right? Well, no, at first, remember, they didn't show it. Yes, 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 yes. And then You can show midriff, just don't show you your show belly, belly button, button, which yeah. is just the weirdest And then thing. also, Samantha. I still don't understand nipples. Samantha either. from, no. I don't understand why one nipple is bad and one nipple is okay. Men's nipples are fine. Yeah. Women's nipples are bad. I don't get, yeah. Okay. I've got nipples, it's Greg. Still a nipple. <laughs> so, that was from uh, Meet the Parents. In case. Everybody. Oh, that's right. You said, Greg, can you milk me? Yeah, that's yeah. what I said. Yeah, okay. I've got yeah. nipples, Greg. Can you milk me? <laughs> it's milk when, because uh, he's been so trying yeah, to describe milking the cat. Milking the cat. Yeah. Right. Um, I went to California. Did you? On a big plane. Oh. On a big aerial plane with seven other people. That's that's not that big of a flight. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good joke. I enjoy <laughs> that. Good you. job. Um, yeah, seven people that I knew. Mm. Um, we went to one of the children's weddings in uh, in California. How was that? It was actually really nice. A big Indian wedding. Uh, so it was like a three day thing. Had the whole Mindy thing. The whole yeah, it was great. That's really cool. Very open. Very uh, welcoming. Just just made us all feel wonderful about. That's being awesome. There. Yeah, so it was you, great. You had a great. blast. Then. The the bride is just a wonderful person. She, um, I'm surprised that she picked him. Um, but uh, is this is this one of those? Obviously, I say this half joking, to where you upgraded then to where like the kid you had is now better because of the oh one thousand okay, percent gotcha. yeah. yeah 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 I I pulled him out of a lot of jams but um, <laughs> she is she just seems to be a good person uh, she I think will end up being a doctor she's right now a nurse like an emergency room nurse ooh. and stuff and he's he has his uh bachelor's in psychology and he's working on his master's in psychology which oh. is great yeah one day they'll be able to pay for their own netflix so that'll be good <laughs> there's nothing in that comment don't worry about it just keep moving <laughs> all right so i have to tell you one story no no no, no. tell me my as as you want. <laughs> my uh, sister-in-law yeah uh unnamed if you do a little digging you can find out real easily um i'll just ask after I'll she there. <laughs> she uh i think may have a bit of a uh, glug glug issue oh right um i think to the point where she carries these little balls lying around in her purse and just like the them, little mini sneaks them in places okay yeah because yeah, yeah. when i when i picked them up um from the hotel nothing was wrong mm-hmm. when we got to the mindy party which was the second night of mm-hmm. this of this gigantic festival um she was flat ass drunk right Mm -hmm. and my mother-in-law always blames it on you know other things well she's she's got anxiety or she's this or that anxiety doesn't make you fall down on your face you know um so anyway she was having trouble getting around um almost fell over in her chair uh several things also anxiety very rarely makes you slur your words Right. That is true. Yeah. But I will just say as somebody who has a problem with English language in general, it is easy to slur your words and not be drunk. Sure. Sure. <laughs> this is not the first time I've seen her run flat ass into walls, you know, things like that. So, um, see, I, I get how like, obviously anxiety can cause you 
to want to drink to take the edge off. Yes. I can, I get I the get connection it. there. Sure, sure. But yeah, no, I'm with you then of usually it's when I obvi- feel super anxious, I, I don't run into, yeah, yeah, It's obvious to me what's going on. She, she get loud? Um, She's not really loud. She uh, just okay. talks a lot, stumbles. Um, Anyway, lots of concepts that start off and then just kind of trip and just don't, you know, like that kind mm-hmm. of thing, right? Um, but anyway, they were doing the... Um, Hold on. Before you continue, Mike, is your sister-in-law me in this situation? Oh, God, no. Oh, okay. No. No. <laughs> they were doing the uh, the henna thing. You know, oh, yeah, where yeah, they yeah. They do the, the super detailed stuff on their hands. I think, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she, she finished that, came back to the table, immediately wiped that hand on her nose, then had the henna ink all over, all over her, her face. face. Yes. That's an episode of New Girl. Yes. It's rough. Because Cece rough. falls asleep with it all. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was rough. But anyway, ended up taking them back to the hotel. Then they missed the brunch the next day. And it's it's a whole thing. Do you want me to share a story then of mine? Sure. You, so please. There's one story I will tell you off air. Mm-hmm. Um. Just because I don't feel like it's appropriate for this podcast. Yeah, I get it, sure. But it happened the same night. Uh, but so the last night there, we decided to um, just kind of go out to... This is at the coast? This is at the coast. Oh, okay. We, yeah. went, we went to Galveston. Yeah. And so yeah. we decided to... And what's your just, home address? No, I'm <laughs> we decided to just kind of go a little bar hopping from place to place kind of just yeah. because like sure. the other nights we'd been there, we had stayed at the Airbnb and just kind of, you know, yeah. sort of like, hey, we should actually go out and just kind of, if we're gonna, you know, be social and have a couple of drinks, let's just go actually experience Galveston. Yeah. Experience Galveston. Uh, yeah. So like there's this one place where it's like a rooftop bar uh-huh. um, and the atmosphere is really cool. Fairly cool nightlife there in Galveston. Okay, I'm, I'm waiting. I, we're we're getting tempering. We're yeah, yeah. Got it. I'm getting. I'm just trying to set up the night before sure. I get to the nice little you know kind of roof bar. Um, I get the group that I'm with, so it's me, and then my uh, brother's brother-in-law and his, or I guess my brother's sister-in-law and her. However you want to do it. Um, but Those are not so the, it's same the three person. of us. No, okay, so. <laughs> I don't think people care. It's, it's people family. People don't care. It's okay, family. I yeah, yeah, sure, it's family. Sure. I was trying to explain. So I get it. Yeah. It's uh, me and two other people that I know. Okay. There you go. There like, you go. So, yeah. Sure. It's all hanging out and having fun. Uh, one of them goes, hey, let's get pickle shots for the table. I've never done a pickle shot before. I don't like pickles, but when in Rome, I was like, all right, I'll try it. Um, we then You understand proceed. that it starts with the word pickle. No, no, no. I get that. Okay. I get that. But it's one of those where I'm like. I mean, if you don't like pickles. I, but it's just like, I can deal with them. It's, I'm just never like, oh, I crave pickles like some people do. Oh, okay. But I was like, I can do one. Yeah, sure. Um, Plus, hey, I'm here to have fun. Right. And it doesn't. You can't spell fun without pickle. That's true. And plus, I'm 34, so it doesn't take much (laughs) to have fun anymore either. So like that one pickle shot might do it. Sure. Um, But so I Proceed to down the most disgusting shot I've ever had in my entire <laughs> life. But it wasn't because Such a bad idea. but it wasn't because of the pickle juice. Like I don't yeah. know what alcohol they use. Yeah. Because the guy with me who took it, same like we both had to Rumple struggle mints. to get it down. Well the guy, and pickle well, juice. Well the guy was like vodka or whiskey. <laughs> Gross either. Yeah, at first. And he goes, I mean, he I goes, understand. I thought the it was vodka. strange when he asked. He goes, So I told him vodka. Yes. But apparently out in the West Coast, they do pickle shots with whiskey, in case you're curious. That's gross. It, yeah. But that was disgusting. But aside from the shot. Hey, people in the West, what's wrong with you? Yeah. They had some, uh, they had some like local beers from like the Carrollton yeah, area on sure. top. But really, you know, really cool little uh-huh. place. So then we go down and there's like a cocktail bar that we go to. Okay. That's really cool and classy. It's got like granite countertops yeah. and the, yeah. you know, guys are wearing, you know, like the V-necks. vest and ties yeah. and. Uh, the one of the guys that I'm with orders the old fashioned, and oh, like yeah. he's like, "Do you want it smoked?" And he's like, "No, I think I'm good." But we smoked. watched. They had they're yeah. like smoke. Oh, it's oh, fancy, yeah. and so like yeah. this is like a little. It's it's a cool little upscale place. Nice. So like, All right, this is nice. Okay, across the road from us, Pickle there is shot, a nightclub. Pickle shot Charlie's. <laughs> there is a nightclub. I'm not naming any of these places. Yeah, sure, sure. There is a nightclub, and. I've never, 
I'm trying to say if I've ever been to one. I might have, but it's been 12 years ago. Mm-hmm. So still, what a I have club? like a dance club. Oh, right? okay. All right. So the people I'm with, um, one's just like three years younger, the others five years younger. Mm-hmm. So they do a little more out sure. and about. Yeah. And again, I'm just here to have. Sure, I'll go with you. Sure. I'm just gonna sit. But yeah. Yeah. Um, it is the deadest dance floor I have ever seen. Right. Right. It's like a middle school dance. It is, and it's so weird too because we played a game called like we were trying to figure out like local or tourist, and we're pretty yeah. sure everybody in there was just a tourist. Sure. Just like, hey. So the weird thing that happened there, though. I don't think you're going to find the locals place. No, you know what I mean? No. Yeah. So the weird thing that happened there that I, um, there was a woman who, and I'm not saying this to, you know, any to diss or take away from sure. this, this couple at all, but I'm just yeah. explaining what it was. Yeah. It was a woman who was probably late fifties. Um, and then her boyfriend, I guess I would say <laughs> who was like 22. Don't you feel like at a certain point you shouldn't call uh, the other person in your life boyfriend or girlfriend? I don't know what else to. Yeah, you know what I'm saying though. Yeah, didn't it seem kind of gross with like they're they're sixty? I think. Well, I think eventually at that point you're just like I like just it's your That's significant my other. Well, no, he's not a boy. That's yeah, just, I mean, I and mean, man friend sounds man weird. friend sounds weird. Yeah. So That's I think my, at that point you just go, That's old my man significant other or yeah. Or you know what? Yeah. If you want to call it whatever your situation, call I get it whatever it. you want. Whatever. To. I'm just but joking. I'm just just for this. Like, stop it. <laughs> so, um, and they're in the middle of the dance floor, yeah. right? Yeah. Wait a minute. You said she was late fifties. He's like 22. 22. Okay. Like flowing mullet. Like she's in like the tightest, like just white dress, like cougar. Yeah. No, like she's a very good sure. looking woman. Sure. I'm not, again, I'm not taking anything away yeah. from her. I'm just trying to yeah. set the scene here. Old ass, real good looking woman. That's what you're saying. And just super young. That was all me. That wasn't him. Yeah. Just super young, uh, yeah. douchey looking dude. Yeah. Right. But. Douchey. Like, <laughs> like it was maybe her kid's friend, but uh, like her kid's not in town. And so I don't yeah. know. Uh, either way, that's not the point. So set it up. Sorry. So like there's actually, I'm by the bar. This is starting to sound like a porn it does. category. It does. Or something. It does. Uh, hey, we're getting to comics too. Sure. Don't worry about it. Super horses. Super horses. Um, Speaking of super horses. So <laughs> he, at one point in time, like there's a couple couples, a couple couples. So there's a couple of groups out there that are dancing, like mm-hmm. actually dancing, mm-hmm. you know. And then they're just flat in the middle. And he sits there and he like takes her and he like pushes her forward. Mm. Like bends her over in the middle of. Oh, nice. Yeah. This Wonderful. is going to get a little graphic if you want to. Not too graphic though. Um. But and he proceeds to just like grab her hips and just starts air humping her in the middle of the dance floor. Yeah, I'm thinking to myself, like, there's not a lot to watch, it's a small place, and I'm like, this is awkward, first of all. Yeah, um, and I'm like, she cannot, you should just yelled out, there are children here, or something, you know. I wanted to, but I'm thinking to myself, like, if I'm her, I'm like. This is kind of embarrassing, yeah. right? And my hip hurts, right? <laughs> she just turns back and grabs him and starts like pulling him oh, in. Oh yeah, sure. And I'm like, the hell am I watching here? Yeah. So they're basically air humping in the middle of the crowd. It's not so much air and humping anymore, like, though. And they like bumped into. Right? I hit the mic just to show. Yeah. But they like bumped into people who are actually oh, dancing, neat. and they're like, "What in the world is going yeah. on?" Yeah. So uh, that's what I got to see. That's neat. At the Gal- you asked about the Galveston uh-huh. nightclub. Yeah, that's what happens Galveston, out there. No Galveston. We had a couple more stops after that, and things got yeah. weirder. But uh, we used to go to a place called Corky's in Galveston. All I remember about Corky's, and this is like when I was a kid, my dad would go down there every every year. I think it's in Galveston. No, mm-hmm. I don't know. Um, he always wanted to go fishing in the sea. Just whatever. Well, isn't that what you do? Is fishing? I guess, man. I don't know. I've just never been a sea fisher. I don't like. Kind of I don't guy. like fishing at all. Really. Yeah, I just don't either. It's so boring. And it's see, nothing so. happens. I understand that it's a calming, you know, mm-hmm. thing. It's hot. Nothing happens. I'm ready to go home. Mm-hmm. You know. You know what else is calming? TV. Mm-hmm. TV's very calming. Oh, for sure. So, uh, 
Yeah, we used to go to Corky's. The only thing I remember from that is the flounder. We'd always have to get the flounder. Is it good? Eh, it's flounder. Do you like I mean, fish? I don't like fish, really. Hmm. Yeah, no, I grew up in a... There's uh, no big air hump in the bit at the end of my story. <laughs> it's just then, flounder. And then <laughs> this dude picks up the fish and so, nah. nah. All right. There's well, a reason their eyes are on one side. You know, there's no better segue to get back into. <laughs> or I maybe. Mean, I really like the back of this thing, though. Oh, the ghostly glow power strikes. Yeah, and I didn't it's even, 19, like, it's Aura. It's like the Universal Aurora Monsters. Aurora has put new life in the monster movies. Wait, you'll see what I, or what happens when the lights go out. Dollar fifty each, wherever hobby kits are sold. You know what? I had one of those. Did you really? Which one? I believe I had the Dracula one. Ooh. It was either Dracula or it was the Phantom of the Opera one. One or the other. Hmm. Yeah, but I remember it's just it's just that translucent type green plastic yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. that glows oh, in the dark. Yeah. You got to like put it under a lamp, lamp first and, and then, then turn the lights the off. Yeah, and then you get cancer. Yeah. <laughs> I love that little snort before we get into this. That's what everybody wanted. <laughs> sure. All right. So now that we've uh, got a little small talk, some stories out of the way. Uh, we'll let's see go you ahead again and, next week. <laughs> let's go ahead and jump into. All right. Super horse. Comet the super horse. Comet the super and horse. And the good thing is, is. It's this is a story that's not going to take a lot because <laughs> no, <laughs> we are focusing again on his dating life because yeah. that is where it gets interesting. Okay, but I will tell you. So what the hell is this? Oh, that's a private P. It's just like a little like comic strip inside the center of it, and then there's an ad for Tootsie Roll Fudge. Sure, for a Tootsie Roll eats, Fudge. Which, by the way, they made vanilla, and I love vanilla Tootsie Rolls. Mm-hmm. I can never find them anywhere unless you get yeah. like the mixed bag occasionally. You're right, right. Vanilla Tootsie Rolls. Vanilla Tootsie Rolls. But that's Tootsie Roll fudge. Yes. Can you, you know the you know the thing wrong with fudge? Not chewy enough. You need really chewy fudge. <laughs> Thanks Tootsie Roll. Thanks Tootsie Roll. <laughs> so yeah, the first part is it's not waxy enough. A uh, of action comic uh, two ninety three from October of sixty nine. Is from uh, is a Superman story. It's a lot but, of words in this thing for a dude, story about a horse. There's a lot. Uh, I'm not reading all of it. Yeah, I'm just no. giving you the cliff notes for all this because we do get the origin. So essentially, in the issue before, uh, Linda Lee Danvers, who well, that's her Earth name, also Supergirl. That sounds a lot like uh, Captain Marvel's name too. Isn't her last name Danvers? Carol Danvers. Yeah. This is before that though. Oh, huh, okay. This Danvers predates that Danvers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that. Sure. So. Oh, he's got Rocky the. Crypto. Super dog. Crypto. And I don't remember what the cat's name is. But for some reason, there's there's a a push for pets. There's Beepo. That's like a super monkey, (laughs) too. Like, wait, what was the name of the the Wonder Twins monkey? I don't remember. He was blue. It was like Glip Glorp or something. Yeah, yeah. It was something like that. Something weird like that. Okay. Bebo, uh, you say? Uh, beep, beep, beep. Dang it. I had it and then beep I lost bop. it. Bebo, Bebop. No, Bebop and Rock said here from the That's turtles. turtles. Yeah. I don't know. I'll look it up later. It'll come up when I go through. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry. I keep derailing. No, you're fine. So, go ahead. Let's find out how this horse got super. <laughs> basically, Linda Lee. Um, actually, in my research, yeah. um, I also came across there's a story of previously where Linda like goes and sees movies and then has dreams and these dreams worry her because she feels like, I guess if she, this is Supergirl, this is Supergirl because in a previous issue, like she watched some like a uh, romance movie where like the man didn't realize it was the love of his life till the end. And by the time he went to go see her, she had already moved on and married somebody else and he right. was heartbroken. And she was worried about her cousin, Superman, not being able to find love. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. So no, I have to you you find of something called just egg. Yeah, in a bottle. It is just just egg, and just I don't necessarily like said the from plants. But well, then it's not egg. But there's like there's a point where like so, so she, she tries see to these set movies. him up. She'd have these terrible dreams. Well, this yeah. So she sees that movie and she has a dream where she's worried about like Superman not being able to find love. Oh. So even though even <laughs> though he's dating or he has feelings for Lois Lane yeah. and Lana Lang, I would also like to point out it's also brought up in an issue that she has by Superman 
huh? When she goes, I chose the name Linda Lee as my Earth name because of the and LL? Superman's like, huh? It's interesting that all my love interests have had LL. Wait, I thought Supergirl was like his cousin. Yeah, there's a point. There's that's what I wanted to try to pull up. I forgot to. Uh, bring up the filter but in my research i also found out even though this isn't about comic uh the super horse yeah there was a time where superman um almost married supergirl but they couldn't because they were cousins oh neat uh i'm trying to find the uh, i should have prepared better for this no you're good um but the what do you the uh, panel i'm just looking a little private pete while you're doing that you know private pete is kind of a uh it's just uh um Beetle Bailey knockoff. It is. But just to bring up, I have to find the... Who put a rug on this floor? <laughs> That's what the guy says. I did. So I <laughs> needed something to sleep under. Uh, so I have this. Uh, so uh, just, just, to, just to kind of put where action and adventure comics were and yeah. how just kind of weird these were. Sure. So there was a time, even just a couple issues before what we're getting into here with Comet the Super Horse, Mm -hmm. where there was like a love interest angle between Superman and Supergirl, right? Yuck. So you see, this is an actual panel here I'm going to read to you. And this is like Superman. He's, got, he's like got her chin in his fingers and he's and like he goes, tipping her head back. Like he's going to kiss her real deeply. He goes, deeply. when I do get married, essentially he's like telling her, here, okay, after the super duo returns. So in that story, she tries to set him up with like Helen of Troy and like some woman from another planet who has an LL name, like she, it, it all goes Tell wrong, them, right? So she goes, Superman, I have a confession to make. I wanted to arrange a happy marriage for you. I failed both times. Superman says, if I ever did marry, it would be someone super bowl or super and lovable like you. Ugh. We can't marry because we're cousins though. Cousins can marry in certain countries. Is here that what he's Earth. saying? Though cousins can marry in certain <laughs> countries here on Earth, we're both from the planet Krypton, where that marriage of cousins, or where the marriage of cousins was unlawful. Grody. Yeah. No, don't like it. So. Don't like it. This is where we are Superman. in the Superman world of comics we're far during the Silver, Silver Age. But, so. Comet's a super horse. <laughs> so, in another similar story. Yeah. Linda goes, sees this Western movie. Okay. And there's a horse in that that's like the hero of the movie. Mm. I think the horse's name is Firebrand, something like Firebrand. that. Firebrand. Um, and so she has dreams about a super horse of her own. Yeah. That has that ends up being Comet, right? Okay. Well, she's decided to go. Where does she get the horse. She decides to like. They've left the city. They're hanging out on the Super Gold Dude Ranch. And it's named the Supergirl Dude Ranch because she rescued the (laughs) livestock there before. And so they named the Dude Ranch after her. Man, come on. So, but while she's there, she comes. Just when I think that we've reached like the stupidest thing. No. She comes across. Supergirl Dude Ranch. She comes across a horse there that matches the horse from her dreams. Mm. And she sees the same. Those horses, boy, they are are like uh, uh, snowflakes. All of them are completely different. Exactly. She sees the same. <laughs> uh like comet shaped birthmark or whatever oh, mark on it that's oh, how he gets okay. his name of All comet right. that is different well she senses that it's the same horse she wakes up and sees him actually flying and realizes oh. there is there must be something up with him yeah so she takes him out because he will only be tame for her kind of so there's a connection between the two of them she so, sees the horse flying yeah Okay. And she's like, he's super, he must be super like in my dream. I have mm-hmm. to figure out mm-hmm. and hide it from everybody else. Kind of, um, got to hide this. Flying so, but horse. there is one thing cause they don't want to let, I, I just found this strange personally, mm-hmm. like the comment won't let them nail, um, the horseshoes, horseshoes to his hoofs. Yeah. So Supergirl's like, I'll do it myself. And she attaches it with her heat vision. Isn't that going to hurt just the same way? Oh, I would think so. I think it would hurt worse. Right. Uh, and then they didn't want to be branded. So she uses her heat vision and lipstick to make a temporary brand. Sure. But still, yeah. it sounds like it would burn too. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't sound like necessarily she helped Comet not. Well, the horse is saying we, he, he while she's doing it. So yeah. He's so he's trying I assume to it hurts. part something. Anyway. Sure. So this is, we, where, he, he. this is where this gets weird though, Mike. And oh, I know you're like, now it's it going to get weird. weird. Yeah. So while she's taking him out on a ride, he flies while she's on him. Mm-hmm. And uh, does does he really fly though, or he, does he really just flies. fall off a cliff? No, he really flies. Okay, 
uh, and they get high onto a cop of a, a top of a canyon rim mm. and Linda dismounts and says, Comet, let's get down to brass tacks. For weeks before I came west, I kept dreaming about a super horse. I believe you sent me those dreams telepathically. Am I right? Yes, and you Comet are. says, correct, Supergirl. No, wait, he seriously talks? I used my, no, he uses, he speaks through telepathy. Oh, he's putting it in her head. I used my telepathic power to bring you here where we could meet. It was vitally important. Oh, my God. And so she's basically like, where'd you come from? Are you from Krypton like me? Like, you know, are you super? And he's like, no, I'm here from Earth, but let me tell you my story. The planet horsing. So a long time ago in ancient, in ancient Greece, mm-hmm. he was a centaur named Byron. Sure. He, Byron. Byron. And he fell in love with a sorceress named Circe. Mm-hmm. Right? Circe had... You're, <laughs> just follow me. This is so many leaps you have to take. No, no. This is just panel to panel. Yeah. Just, yeah. No, I get it. I'm just saying. So uh, Circe had a evil wizard who was always against her named Maldor. Mm, and one day Maldor was trying to poison the water near where Cersei lived and Byron just to be a dick. Yeah. Just he's like, I don't like it says uh, he plans to poison her in revenge, but it doesn't say what mm. revenge for what. So Byron Comet, the centaur um, rescues her <laughs> rescues Cersei. And so to make it up to him, she's like, what do you need? And he's like, well, I'd love if you could just make me a human being, mm. like instead of half one. And she's like, for sure, I can. Here's what I love, though. If not that, a Shirley Temple, please. Yeah. So she's like, oh, indeed, Byron, I can do this. So Byron goes to Cersei and Cersei hands him a potion and says, this is my greatest achievement as a sorceress. One vial contains an elixir that would turn you into a horse. This one will turn you into a man. Why did she make two vials? I don't know. Do you see where this is going? Yeah, yeah. One that would turn you fully into a horse, yeah. one that would turn you fully yeah. into a man. Just make the one that's going to turn him into a man. Yeah. But uh, then she gives him a choice? No, she goes, here, this will turn you into a man, and he drinks it. Psych, it's the wrong one, and it turns him fully into a horse. Why even tell him about the other one? Why even make the other one? Yeah, but I'm saying, if you, it, this is obviously a, haha, I got you. No, kind of it's thing. not. No, it's not. We, she, she mixed them up. She is like, I'm so sorry oh, I gave you the it. wrong potion. So she makes a new, she can't change them back. Not again. So she just makes another potion that gives them all the superpowers. Oh, okay. It's yeah. not like, hey, I'm sorry. Here's a potion to turn you full human. It's like. She's a one-way You're wizard. SOL. Yeah. But here, I'll give you powers because I feel bad. Right. Right? Thanks. We come to find out that Maldor had switched the potions. Oh. So it wasn't her being absent-minded. But so now. Maldor's got this super horse to deal with, right? <laughs> so Maldor's like, what do I do with this super horse? And yeah. the guy who taught him the evil art says, like, throw this powder at him. I'm paraphrasing a lot because sure. there's a lot of words sure. here. Sure, there are a lot of but words. But it's like, throw this powder on. Like, since he's a uh, centaur, he's linked to the constellation Sagittarius. If you throw this powder on him, it'll banish him to Sagittarius. <laughs> and as you can see, he gets sucked out of Earth oh, up into boy. Sagittarius, and he's stuck mm. on the constellation until the rocket that is sends Supergirl to Earth passes by the meteor he's on oh, and breaks his, the bond, yeah. and he's able to escape. So he knew he needed to come and be with Supergirl. Wow, this all makes such sense right? now. Because she sure. saved him. He needed to help her out. <laughs> So he kept sending her these dreams Ugh. of like, hey, I'm, and then he landed hey, at the Supergirl ranch. You don't know me, but I'm a horse in space. And, and tried to blend in with the other horses, knowing she would come there to meet up. Wait, tried to blend in with the other horses. Like I mean, he, he did. He did blend in, not tried. You're a horse. Yeah, he can't talk. So sure. he just acted like the other horses until you she came up. You think he can up. hear the other horses' thoughts? Uh, I think so. It's I don't know. I mean, it wasn't brought up here. They just think so oats, oats, that oats, oats, the rest oats, of us doesn't. Who cares? I just told you that to tell you the origin. <laughs> okay. Because we're focused. All I right. said on his cool. dating life. Yeah. But you needed to know that at one point in time, he's yeah. not a full horse. He was a centaur. Right. Who was supposed to be human. Who was turned into a horse. Yeah. It makes a big difference. Well, a couple issues later, uh, Supergirl and mm. Comet go on some. Outer space adventures, right? Sure. To the Why planet, not? to the planet Xerox. Nuh-uh. Xerox. Really? Yeah. 
it's spelled similar. I don't know if it's exactly. I looked at it. X E R O X. Yeah, Xerox. Mm. And uh, while they're there, <laughs> the wizard on Xerox. Again, I'm paraphrasing a lot of this. Uh, the mighty and mystical IBM. He basically <laughs> he basically tells Comet like, "Thanks for rescuing us. I'll grant any wish." And he's like, "I want to be human." Um, makes sense. Comet has a thing for Supergirl. I guess I should go. The ahead horse and does. Put the, yes. This is where we're going, Mike. So, so like we're headed towards a show in Mexico. Oh, it's not in Mexico. It's in Metropolis, baby. Mm. So uh, he wants to be human again. The wizard grants it. And basically every time a comet like passes mm. by Earth mm. for the time it's in Earth's atmosphere, comet can turn fully into a human. <laughs> okay. Okay. That brings us to <laughs> Action Comics. Yeah, 311. I didn't say anything. No, no. I saw it was Lois Lane. Action, Action Comics 311. <laughs> which I'm kind of bummed out uh, because the cover is great because it says featuring Superman, King of Earth. Yeah, he's wearing a big old crown. With he's, an S on. Yeah, and he wants gifts from like all the, like it's kind of cool. Uh-huh. And apparently, like I thought this was going to be like a dream or something. Oh, man. No, it's a story of where like Superman this, wants to become. This, the golden rule. Oh, this is. Oh, hold on. I didn't read any of that. Uh, this is about the National Periodic. It's it looks about, like a goofus and gallant So you thing see, from Boys it Life. is a law in a way. Is that Bob Hope? Is it Bob Hope? <laughs> it's Bob Hope. Hold on. Okay, let me read the golden rule. Okay. <laughs> this is on the front. It, on this the is on the inside the, front the inside, page. I, I was just going to wrap him and say Superman yeah. King of the Earth. It's apparently an actual yeah. story of how he becomes King of the Earth. Okay. Uh, I didn't read it, uh, but it looks like it could be a fun story. Yeah. But as you open it up, it's like a black and white one. It says the golden rule, and it's five different Looks panels. It's like it's gold and white, or gold and black. It is gold and black. That's yeah. right. That's right. Uh, and it says, boy, you sure missed it. Bob Hope was swell. <laughs> and it's all these kids leaving a house that says Brotherhood Week, Bob Hope in person. Brotherhood Week. And one of the kids trips the kid who says that, and he laughs. And on one Does of the other kids, ha, ha. he goes, ha, ha, ha. Uh. And the kid from the group says, that wasn't funny. How would you like somebody to do that to you? Another child chimes in. Yes, he should have been inside listening to what Bob Hope was talking about. (laughs) The golden rule. Hello, I'm TV personality Bob Hope. By the way, I would also like this pointed out that this is this comic was from if that's October of 69. Mm -hmm. We're in April. Did I say 62? You said 62. Yeah. No, I thought it was 69. A lot of people thought that. Oh. <laughs> Did they? <laughs> Didn't work out well. No, he debuted in, hold on, October of 62. I did yeah, say that. 62. That's what I thought. Okay, this must be a reprint then. Okay. Or maybe it is. Uh, so this dumbass this is from kid 74, should have listened to Bob Hope Okay, yeah, yeah. About so brotherhood. Like, about the golden rule. Sure. So then the bully goes, ah, baloney. Ah, baloney. What do you know about all, or what do you know about it, Ollie? Ollie. You talk as if it's a law. Just because one religion has that rule. So now we're getting religious. Well, now it's Christianity all of a sudden. Hold on. And then so somebody said, but it's not just one religion, son. And the bully goes, uh, Bob Hope. Oh. And Bob Hope goes, it's been all around the world. And I've found that all the major religions everywhere have the same basic it's, principle. It's been all Here are just a few samples. Christianity. And now all Carmen things, Miranda. <laughs> Christianity. All things whatsoever you would that men should do to you do ye even so to Wait, them <laughs> they went straight king james okay buddhism hurt not others in ways that you yourself would find hurtful mm-hmm. <laughs> judaism what is hateful to you do not to your fellow men it says what is hateful wow. to you do thanks. not to your fellow men thanks, i feel Bob like Hope. they're yeah and then he goes islam no one of you is a believer until he desires for his brother that which he desires for himself. And then Bob Hope sums it up. So you see, it is a law in the way, the universal law of humanity. Get wise, son, and join the human race. <laughs> so there you go. That's Bob Hope telling you about the golden rule. And now, Topo Chico. <laughs> You know what? Let's take a moment here. <laughs> Let's take a commercial break. Commercial break. A word from our sponsors. Bye.
Hope you learned something there as yeah, useful man. as the golden rule. Go Bob Hope. I don't know if Bob Hope was one of our. Uh, on one I of doubt the it. Ads. He's been dead for a while. Oh, yeah. well, it's probably Jimmy JJ Walker. Dynamite. Tell us how dynamite Social Security is. <sighs> I feel bad watching those sometimes. Yeah, those are. But rough. it's like, but I know, like, that, you know, check out your zip code. But to it's like, see if you get extra money. You got to take the work you can get. Like I get it. Like I don't hate on them for doing. It. Same with Joe. You know, Joe Namath. Like yeah. I get. It. You got to take yeah. what you can get. Oh, they're the exact same commercial too. Oh man. So uh, in I'm case football Hall of Famer John Joe Namath. John Namath. <laughs> John Namath. I'm Joe's brother. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm football f- hall of famer brother, football hall of famer joe name is brother john, john <laughs> talk to you about your <laughs> check out your zip code <laughs> you remember how my brother threw the ball real well well check out your zip code for payments i, could, I couldn't throw the ball real well but i could find out my zip code <laughs> I, could, I could throw the ball real well that's why i have to rely on my social security <laughs> you remember my brother Joe and how he used to shill you pantyhose? Well, both of my legs look like somehow they were hobbit legs. <laughs> and if legs. you put in for your benefits, check out your zip code. Oh, okay, man. sorry. Okay, no, you're fine. <laughs> so, in case you were curious, um, Action Comics, a yeah. subscription for 10 issues back in 1964. Yeah. Only a dollar. Wow. Just 10 cents each instead of the 12 cents. Oh, boy. What That's a deal. like finding an extra 20 cents. Yeah. <laughs> it's like finding an extra 20 cents in Superman's cape. That was great. That was <laughs> nice. I like that a lot. Sorry. So, we're, uh, we're in, he's enjoying a beverage from uh, the Mexicano Grille. And, um, <laughs> Yeah, I didn't realize that my straw was going to make that much noise. Anyway, the day Super Horse became human. Oh, boy. Is the Supergirl story. So he's kissing on Supergirl? He's kissing on Supergirl. So, yeah, basically, it's like. uh, Oh, Johnny, you taste like carrots. (laughs) It's Valentine's Day. And Supergirl gets like (laughs) so many Valentines uh, to the Daily Planet. Sure. She like basic has so many of them that she like takes a giant mailbag to the Fortress of Solitude because mm. like so many. If you think about it, she's, she's enamored read them all. by it. She's enamored by it. But if that were today, so many creepy people are just writing you letters oh, to yeah. be your Valentine. Come on, um, dear Supergirl. But he realizes that he follows her, and he's kind of upset that uh, here. <laughs> Presently, as Supergirl heads for the Fortress of Solitude, Comet, glad to see you. This is the happiest day of my life, as she's carrying that bag full of all those Valentines. And Comet thinks, because he can't talk, Yeah, I know it. <laughs> he thinks because he can't talk. <laughs> well, like we have the thought bubbles, not the speech bubbles. Yeah, Supergirl. And he goes, I know it. I can read your thoughts telepathically. You're, you're no Bob Hope. You deserve the world's love and admiration. Yeah. After dropping her mail in the fortress, Supergirl gets another mental message. Jethro, I'm sorry, not Jethro. Jethro. Jero calling Supergirl. Wait, what? Jero. Jero's like a fish dude. Uh, (laughs) I don't remember his name. He is. I'm trying to see if it's on here. Okay. But he's like Jero the fish boy or something like that. Jero the fish boy. It's it's something like that. But he basically. J-E-R-R-O. He gets fish to spell out love to my Valentine Supergirl for her. Oh, God. And essentially, Comet just gets upset by all this, right? So Comet decides, hey, if I were a man, if I were free to tell her of my real feelings, you know, I'd... What? Yeah. That's him? Yeah. What There's is a picture of Jero. The fish boy? What is he? Jero? just the, says Jero. The thing I like the most is it looks like he has no crotch. Well, he has a mermaid tail. He does have a mermaid tail. He's a merman. Basically, Comet decides... He's like a little tiny Superman merman. Look at him. He looks like Superman. He does. In a puffy shirt. Uh, So basically, though, uh, he goes back in time to Cersei, and he begs Cersei to give him a potion to turn him to actual human, like before. And so he takes the right potion this time. I'm sorry. I have to stop you one more time. I was wrong. It's not just Jero. It's Jero the Merboy. Merboy, that's what it was. <laughs> Not Fish Boy. Jero the Merboy. Jero the Merboy. Uh, essentially, what happens, though, is he goes back in time. He yeah. gets, you know. Lex Luthor? No, this is uh, the Hooded Demon. He's, <laughs> oh. a, he's a villain. Uh, everybody makes that mistake. I don't know. Basically, 
I'm not going to tell you how. There's like a whole story about What's him. A, there's a horse on fire. Yeah, it's him. He can fire horse. light himself on fire. I don't You remember. can't shoot the horse either? Oh, he's Yeah, he has all the, the, po- the powers he has. He's indestructible. Mm. Basically, though, he's able to turn into a human is what we're getting to here. Would you not just enter him into like the, the Kentucky Derby every single time? Oh, I would. And just, just win all I the money? I guess Superman's better than that. But though. I guess Superman could just knock over banks, too, so... Yeah, so, though, essentially, while everything's going on, um, he turns into a human right where Linda Lee is kind of hanging out, and she falls from a cliff, and he (laughs) saves her. Um, Where is, hold on, his name, the alias he takes. I love how it's just, like, something that happens to people. You know, he's hanging out, she falls from a cliff. Here's what's funny, too, is he turns into... I see that, yeah. ...a human, and then he rides a horse, which is, I feel like if you're a horse all the time, you want to ride That's not good, no. Yeah. Um, That that sequence where he's turning into the human there, you know, it's his face, and it shrinks down into the human face. It reminds me of, like, uh, uh, American Werewolf in London. Oh, yes. You know? Yes. So I, I totally get that. I'm yeah, trying to see nothing if, funny about that. Just a comment. Uh, Bronco Bill. Is that what he goes by? Bronco Bill. Yeah. Yeah. It is weird. If you were a horse that could turn into a guy, would he you comes ride up a with horse? a name. Yeah. Well, that's really weird, weird. too. No, I'm trying to remember his name here. Dang it. Cause he does. Merboy. Uh, basically just for the sake of the story. Mm-hmm. Um, so he's turned into a human. He mm-hmm. rescues Linda. Yeah. In the whole moment of everything of getting saved, she's overtake. Yeah. Bronco Bill's reward mm. revives old memories. He doesn't know it, but I kissed him that time we met too. I don't know what she's talking about. Maybe mm. another dream. Okay. Uh, how I'd love her. Wonder what she'd say if I told her I remember her kissing me once before in her Supergirl identity. Hmm. So apparently I missed one. My bad. Eek, Linda. Yeah. So this isn't the first time that he's been a human and they've kissed. Okay. Um, but like going Does on a date. Does he look different every time? No, he looks the same. Like she's what? Linda's so enamored. She just forgot about it? Uh, yeah. She just forgot about it. I, I, okay. oh, 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 oh. I do vaguely remember this. Okay. There is a time where he was, but whatever the spell, ma- there's a lot of magic to deal with him. Hmm. Amnesia. Seems forget lazy. stuff. It is lazy writing. Okay. But Linda is so enamored by the human version of Comet, Bronco Bill, that Bronco Bill. she like uses her heat oh, vision yeah. to carve a heart a into a tree that says Linda and Bill. Uh-huh. She also uses her heat vision to create a rainbow over the falls after like hearing some sort of legend like, uh-huh. you know, a rainbow must be a silly superstition, but, you know, let's see if it works to show that we love each other. Yeah. And it happens and... They kiss again and oh, Bronco. Yeah, he goes. Circle predicted I would, or Cersei re, or predicted I would regret becoming mortal. How wrong she was. Now that I have the girl I adore. So basically, um, yeah, <laughs> Comet is so enamored, and he has now kissed uh, Supergirl multiple times. But then eventually, trouble calls and he turns back into a horse, and now he's just Comet. <laughs> And um, he goes back to being a horse okay. who just loves Great. her. Yeah. Um, so it happens. It's very lazy riding, but it happens multiple times. Comet, a mm-hmm. horse, is yep. into Linda Lee, a.k.a. Supergirl the Human. I love and, how none of that is referenced on the cover of this comic. No, it's not. Absolutely none of it. But if you're like, all right, that's a little weird that a horse would date Supergirl. I guess, well, we call it date. Sure. Uh, would make out with Supergirl. Um, but that's only one girl, right? No, yeah. don't worry about it. He's going to mack on Lois Lane, oh, too. Oh, nice. So. Wait, Lois Lane is a centaur. Yep. We're going to get to that. There was also at the time uh, a comic that existed called Superman's Girlfriend, Lois Lane. Uh-huh. That was just about Lois Lane's adventures. This whole thing is a long Lois Lane story. You ever wanted to so read that? Is this more of like one of those romance comics that just happens to be like Superman adjacent? In a sense, yeah. Yeah. Um, but in this one, basically. Holy shit, they've got a cape on him. Yeah, no, Crypto eventually does get, not Crypto, uh, Comet does eventually get a super cape. Wow. Um, but. Wow. So they're essentially, there's like a rocket. Mm-hmm. 
launching in satellite city superman in satellite city superman is supposed to create like an artificial um meteor for this rocket to attempt to take like take out it's a mars shooting rocket mm -hmm. like it's a test for it lois lane's going out to the middle of the nowhere to cover this for the daily planet okay. but car breaks down it's so hot well, she doesn't have in, any water she's in the desert palms motel jeep yes she goes out to the desert it's obviously very hot because a lot of heat waves coming up off the thing uh she gets out there and then she ends up on the ground yeah because she's walking she's like so the, hot the car breaks down she passes out comet oh, so she's crawling in the desert comet obviously part of the super family yeah telepathically comes saves her mm. my psychic power tells me that lois is staying here i'll leave her in the cool shade so he like just Says takes her to the horse. hotel right mm -hmm. comet rescues her mm -hmm. well oh strange thing uh that meteor's passing by again okay. i better run inside because i'm about to turn into a guy a, a human again this time but he's just he adopts a better name he is now bill byron instead mm. of bronco bill mm -hmm. he takes his name byron bronco bill byron and just now he's bill byron uh, Wait, what? Okay, is this like is him first transforming? Okay, he's transforming. He's taking a. Okay. Oh, he's just. Oh, okay. I thought he was in the shower. No, for no. For a no, second, no. it looked like he was in the shower and turning from a horse to a man. Yeah, he is turning from a horse he's to got a man. A big ass. He does very. That's because it's still a horse. Still a horse. <laughs> um. So he works at like some magic show uh -huh. as an Levitates. assistant because he does it like for work. Like he just you know when he's turning human he just has sure. jobs. Yeah. Yeah. He got to. Um. Lois is like you know you seem familiar kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, a splendid performance, Byron. But your stunts didn't fool me. In that blindfolded act, you use blank cartridges. But those glass are and but those glass balls were so thin. They shattered at the sound of the pistol. So the trick is that he's on the stage. With oh, that he's able to shoot. On. Yeah, and he's able to shoot blindfolded yeah. at glass he's balls. He's shooting in a room full of people as someone throws glass balls in the air. Uh, we find out it's because. This is one of my favorite tricks. She's covered a magician's um, like convention before. So she knows all the. This is Lois Lane. She knows everything. Sure. Uh, Byron then tells her, I think at the point that as a reporter, if they send you out to cover the magicians conference, you, you got to start looking for something else. Exactly. Byron then tells her his whole backstory again uh -huh. about how he was a centaur. And then now how he, so this is like girl. another origin story. It's basically? the same origin He's though. He's just telling somebody Telling else. it again, telling uh -huh. Lois Lane that. Okay. Well, while he's there, he gets this weird sense about some people. That is the thing about horses. Long-winded. Long-winded oh. indeed. Uh, so, Comet, I'm going to call him Comet, even though he's in his human form, sure. just to make it easier. Comet gets this weird sense about people close by at a table close to them, and he gets a sense that they're there to hurt Lois. Uh -oh. So, he pulls out some flowers with sneezing powder on them, and sure enough, they sneeze, and it knocks both their wigs off. <laughs> <laughs> and they realize that that couple was there. It's Dr. Tulin and his wife. Clark Kent and I helped convict them for stealing military secrets. I heard they were out on parole, so they were coming to kill her. So they put on wigs, went to the magician's conference, and sat at a table. No, 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 no. They're not at the magician's conference. Now, now. they're at a No, no, no. The show, she knew, okay. Lois knew all of the secrets of the magicians okay. because she covered the magician's conference. Okay. All right. So, but so now they're just they're at a dinner. restaurant. Yeah. And there's these two people in wigs. And the man who used to be a horse pulls out some fake flowers with some uh, sneezing, sneezing powder. powder, sneezing powder on it. They sneeze so hard their wigs fly off. Yep. Okay. I'm caught up. Okay. <laughs> um, what do they do to those people? He explains. Oh, they just arrest them. He they, tells them his origin again. <laughs> He's like, oh, you see, I was a centaur. Uh, so they just arrest him. They put him back into a cop oh, car. Oh, okay. Great. So it says, briefly, Byron recounts a fabulous story about how he's able to become human because of the meteor. Mm -hmm. And then We Lois, know, Byron. We've heard. Here's the thing. I don't get the weird porn mood lighting. Yeah, it's weird. But Lois goes, you risked your life to save me and told me secrets, which not even Superman or Supergirl knows. Why? But they do know because we covered it a couple mm -hmm. issues back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then he goes, because in the short time I've known you, I've learned to love you. And Lois goes, Byron, you're sweet. And they go in and they kiss. And Lois says, this is wild. 
maybe he's super horse, but this handsome human identity of his really turns me on. Oh, that's gross. So not only has you know what she, I mean, a human form. We know what she's trying to. Oh know? yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, because you know, there's that phrase. You, <laughs> you ever watch? Um. Oh my goodness. I, of course, I'm blanking on the name for it. It's the former SNL guy. Uh, he has the show on Netflix now. Tim. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you should leave or whatever yes, it's called. Yeah, yes, yes. Yeah. It's hilarious. Have yeah. you watched? Mm-hmm. Do you remember the one about the horse ranch? Mm-mm. What happened to the horse ranch? Was it, Oh, it was the one with the they're little geneti- one. They're all genetically yeah. modified. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, It was yeah. very small. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, no, I do remember that. I think you should leave is what it's called. Right? Oh, Tim. Tim, it's, Tim, it's not, Tim Bing Bong. Tim Robin? Nope. No. Tim. I it don't doesn't know. matter. Uh, it's hilarious. It's well, I say that some people, my wife doesn't like it. I love it. So I think it's very show. funny. I like, I like the one where, uh, he tries to push the door instead of pull it. Then he or just tries keeps, to pull like, it instead of pushing. like, no, it's not. Yeah. 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 Uh, I love the one with the magician. Funny enough, we're talking about magicians mm-hmm. where he like makes fun of them and he and his wife get into a fight. You didn't stand up for him at all. I'm yeah. going, they get, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it's just such awkward comedy. It is, but it's hilarious. Speaking so, of awkward comedy, this chick's uh, uh, she's making she's out. Lois out, Lane is making out with here. a horse. Yep. So the rest of this story, though, is I don't want it to be lost that at the bottom of this, there's an there's an uh, airplane model airplane ad from Ravel. Revel. I yeah, Ravel. Said. I think it's real. And the name of the plane is Pluck. It is Pluck. Pluck. March 1969, model of the month. Pluck the plane. So that's where I got 69 from is yeah. from this Yeah, one. that's where you got it from. So it's a, yeah. So then I guess they thought like, hey, they won't remember what happened seven years ago. Sure. We'll retell it. And the then be are, like, they don't know. Most of those kids are dead. He flat out tells. Being out super- selling seeds. Look like on the back of this one. <laughs> they they all got abducted. I have to pay attention to some of these. There is yeah, on the, the back, back ad. It's it's. Those, I'll, I'll, yeah, it's, I remember a lot of those, man. Yeah, they always wanted you to to get the American seeds. So you sell seeds. You go door to door selling packages of seeds. So yeah, I like this fat face kid that says they sell as fast as I can get them there. I or can whatever. show them. Yeah. So here's it has names. <laughs> hey, and I've states. got these. I'll take them. And one kid says, "I sell seeds every year." That's all it says. <laughs> one of the girls, Mary, says. It's an easy way to get money and prizes. Yeah. William, who's Mike's favorite, says, yeah, they sell as fast as I can show them. And Desmond, he says, I sold 240 packs in one hour and a half. <laughs> yeah. They're 15 cents. Hold I love on. those pictures, Hold on. Let's, let's figure this out. Let's figure out how much money Desmond made in an hour and a half. 15 cents. So. Well, he didn't get to keep all that. I know, but let's just assume that he did just for the sake of this argument. is a commissioned salesperson. And he gets 15 cents. He made $36. $36 in an an hour and a half, half, man. In 1969, right? Yeah, that's got to be like a million and a half $36. Oh, this is riveting podcast stuff. Joel Ballinger from Washington says, I sell American seeds every year. Oh, hey, it's the equivalent of uh, two, basically like $291. Oh, that's really not bad for an hour and a half. So like 300 bucks an hour and a half. Way to go, Desmond. For this kid that died in Vietnam. (laughs) That's what it looks like. Like you look at these pictures and you're like, oh, yeah, it's like the end of American Graffiti or something, right? That's the kid. Squints from Sandlot. He looks like Squints from Sandlot. Yeah. But like it is like the end of American Graffiti though. This one died in Vietnam. Yeah. This one got hooked on drugs. Oh yeah. This one jumped off a cliff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's like the we we just followed their fun life story, sure. and then they just like and here's all the horrible stuff. One day they sold seeds and they made a lot of money, uh, and then he died in Vietnam. Yeah, it's like all that money started his uh, uh, <laughs> his heroin yeah, habit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we find out though that thanks American Seed Company that Maldor, remember that evil Maldor, sorcerer? the evil sorcerer, uh-huh. he's back, sorcerer, sorcerer. and. Uh, so part two of this story has Maldor it, turn Lois. Why is it that these guys always, okay, the sorcerer guys always with the short skirts yeah, and with the weird bangs. Yep. A lot of them. They look, they look a lot. I don't know, but I, like I, I, I uh, forgot to tell you part two of this because it's split into two mm-hmm, parts. Mm-hmm. Aptly titled, did I say the first one was just called the unspeakable spell or the mm-hmm. unbreakable spell? Hung like a super horse. Part two. This is great. Mm-hmm. If you if you know, you know. If you don't, you don't. The chestnut mare ain't what she used to be. Good God. Come on. Yeah. 
That's the title of, uh, <laughs> and now that'll be stuck in your head if you have it. Uh, but so eventually Maldor comes back and turns Lois into, it's not necessarily a lie that she's a centaur on the cover because this mm-hmm. is her changing into a horse. Mm. So briefly it does happen, but like that's a it. half second. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Um, so yeah, Maldor turns her into that a horse. That has to be uncomfortable. Oh yeah, turning for sure. into a horse. So he's basically like, huh, you know, you want to be, go ahead. You can be a super horse forever then. <laughs> I'll get you, Lois Um, Lane. But now Lois Lane's a horse, and she goes to try to get (laughs) Bill Byron, a.k.a. Comet's help. That's the clip I want to use for social media. All right, now Lois Lane's a horse, (laughs) and you just keep going. (laughs) Follow me. Um, And so a man taught himself to fly. Remember, Mike, we've covered some strange stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. But so Lois goes to get Comet's help since he's still a human form, Mm -hmm. uh, and she saves off, like she fights off wolves who are trying to attack him yeah that'll happen but the comet leaves and he turns back into a horse Mm -hmm. and so now lois and comet are both horses Mm -hmm. and you would think to yourself oh they can just both talk to himself telepathically then sure no because their telepathic beams cross oh they like they interfere with each other so they can't talk yeah so they can't talk to each other okay also, I don't realize, though, when Maldor turned her into a horse, why he turned her into a super horse. Mm. Because she oh, has wait, just she's a all, super horse? She has all the powers that Comet does. And so since they can't talk, <laughs> she flies off and he realizes, oh, she must be the one who saved me earlier. Oh, shit. Oh, there she goes. Oh, this must be Lois. Um, essentially, though, they're able to go back. And I don't remember. Cersei's able to help transform her back into Lois Lane. Mm-hmm. Superman and Superman comes back from helping and essentially he's like, Hey guys, what's up? Well, it's a whole thing. Yeah. The comic ends later is Byron or comet returns from space Uh because he did it to take, you know, to help turn her back. It's law. It's Lois back in her motel. Thank the gods. My beloved one is safe, but will I ever meet her again in my human identity? And that says, meanwhile, that's right. Miss Lane, Mr. Byron, Byron never bothered to check out. He simply vanished guess he's just another drifter and she goes i suppose you're right only i know the truth about him byron must have reverted back to the super horse identity when superman's comet left earth's vicinity i wonder if i'll ever see him again byron wherever you are i'll never forget you and i'll never reveal your secret identity this is the dumbest thing we've ever covered so what I have just covered is two separate occasions where a horse dated Supergirl and Lois Lane. Yeah, that is the dumbest thing. Macked on both heard. of them. Yeah. But don't worry about it. Where do their clothes go? I, I don't know. Don't worry about it because something happened in 1986 called uh, Crisis on Infinite Earth. Okay. That I've heard of that. Mm-hmm. May or not, may or may not be familiar with. Mayor. Sorry. It's not, that's not Crisis on Infinite Earth. It's just. Uh, Crisis on regular Earth. Well, no, is it? Uh, there's so many crises. I forget what they're all called now. <laughs> so many crises. It's the first one, people. Sure. The 86 okay. one. All right. The first crisis. Uh, I think it's on Infinite Earth. Dang it. I don't remember. Either way. Um, but what happens is that story is Supergirl uh, essentially sacrifices herself. Mm. And so she dies. Mm-hmm. And so um, all the canon of this stuff yeah. went away after that. 86, Supergirl now, none of that happened, right? Okay. It, essentially for them. They say like, hey, remember that time Supergirl dated her horse? No, because that, you know, that oh. Supergirl's dead. Oh, okay. That's not, okay. That Supergirl. That Supergirl's dead. That's why we have all those different Earths. Yeah. Yeah. I will say one of the funny jokes about the DC League of Super Pets mm-hmm. is Lois Lane calls a Justice League helpline. To if it's like, you know, if yeah. this is an emergency, you know, yeah. or you've reached the Justice League hotline. Mm-hmm. If this is an emergency on Earth 1, press 1. If this is an emergency uh, on Earth 2, press 2. Funny. And I was yeah. like, okay, that's funny. Yeah. Um, but so let me tell you just briefly. I had to pull up so I can read it. I did not read in this. If you're curious, then you're like, well, what happened to? Yeah. Because if Supergirl's not around, that means there's no Comet the Super Horse. Where'd they go? Oh, he came back okay. in 1997. Great. A very different comet was introduced in Supergirl number 14. I'm reading this from uh, Wikipedia just to kind of give you a breakdown of it. This version uh, was originally introduced with the flight and cold generation powers 
Comet's appearance, I'm not there for that. This is where we're getting, you want to know about how Comet came to be. Yeah. Not necessarily his powers. Yeah. There was a lot of speculation about who Comet was, but it was revealed that Comet was Andrea Martinez, a gay stand-up comic who, like her friend Linda Danvers, when I first read that, I was like, did somebody rig Wikipedia? Yeah. Like, when I read this, yeah. okay, just know this is what happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, who, like her friend Linda Danvers, who would turn into Supergirl, could shapeshift between her human and superpower forms. However, Comet's change also involved changing gender from female Andrea to the male Comet. So, human form is Andrea Martinez, stand-up comedian. Gay stand-up comedian. Okay. That they had to point out. Male Gay form. stand-up comedian. Sure. Oh, it's 97. We got to be, yeah. you know. Okay. Granted, I didn't read this. They might have actually done it really well. I shouldn't attack it, but yeah, there's no way they did it well. That's true. It's the nineties. There's just no way. <laughs> um, no, it's not even. It's the nineties. It's the story. That's, that's true it's, too. It's that's very true too. Yeah. Uh, but it gets better because soon it was learned that Comet's male form was originally Andrew Jones, a male jockey who had been trampled by horses <laughs> <laughs> and rebuilt by an organization called. The stable as a superhuman oh with equine God. DNA. He rebelled against the organization and began began operating he as a superhero. On one of his first missions, he attempted to save a despairing Andrea Martinez who had come out to her parents and had been rejected from an avalanche, but they both died. As with Matrix and Linda Danvers, who merged <laughs> she, into Supergirl and Angel of Fire, by an avalanche? this caused the two of them to combine into one being. So there's an avalanche. This is stupid. <laughs> there's an avalanche. The horse tries to rescue Andrea. Can't, but in the av- avalanche, they form into one person. And that's, that's how she can That's not what avalanches turn. do. Um, the, this door opened. Oh, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on I am. On. Here's the thing, man. I am willing to go with the lightning strike, the 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 weird uh, radioactive thing that happens. That all of this stuff that turns you into a not an avalanche. Yeah. This caused them to combine into one being, the Earth Angel of Love. What? Comet originally was in love with Supergirl, and since he was the Angel of Love. Made her have you can't feelings just for say a thing made like her have feelings for him too. Oh, That's right. Come on. Don't worry about it. We brought back the fact that Comet a horse still loves Supergirl. <sighs> but this time we're making her have feelings for me too. This is this is yucky. Uh I feel all dirty. Yeah. But she rejected him when she learned he was also a woman. Not that he was a horse, uh-uh. but he was a woman. Yeah. Yeah. This opened the door for the third angel, Blythe, the angel of light, to use her powers to exploit Comet's heartbreak and turn them against Supergirl. She enabled Comet to fully embrace their angel powers. Where'd the effing angels come from? Transforming him slash herself into a winged centaur. Good God. So. Hey, let me ask you a done. question. Um, do you know what noise Hawkman makes? Because there's an ad in one of these comics for the new <laughs> Hawk, Hawkman comic. No what? Right, I mean, it's a good guess on your part, mm-hmm. right? Caw-caw! Hawk, hawk, well, anything like that, like that yeah. right? Hawk, hawk, yeah. No, it's it's uh, Hawkman has won his wings, and from now on, his famous battle cry will appear in his own magazine, and it says now his famous, and then it says the battle cry. You ready for the battle cry? Mm-hmm. Wheat, wheat. <laughs> wheat, 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 wheat. Oh man. Yeah, he can thrill to his high-flying adventures of the Wing Wonder as he fights menaces of the present with weapons of the past and science of the future. Wheat, mm-hmm. wheat. So I thought it'd be funny just to focus on. There is on nothing better in this whole thing, though, than spelling out how much you love somebody in with fish. fish. By yeah. Jero the Merboy. Jero the Merboy. <laughs> wow. This thing went all over the place, man. It did, man. but yeah. So uh, let's not forget about how Comet the Super Horse is multiple time. He he's multiple people. He's yeah. He he's uh, an angel. He turns into a human. Yeah. Well, that's that's later. Just essentially, just to know that he turns into humans. <laughs> You're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's later. That's later. Don't worry about that. He turns into humans, and or he turns into a human, and he max on Supergirl and Lois Lane, and is- they both like. I willfully consentfully kiss him sure like this is a sure. relate 
So I guess essentially we figured out today, uh, if you want to impress your friends next time you're at a party, be like, hey, did you know that Supergirl and Lois Lane are both into bestiality? Because you would be correct. <laughs> And that is the kind of things you can learn here on Bros, Foes, right. and Heroes. That's right. You got it. Uh, this has been fun, man. Um, yeah. I want to know why this dude's bringing a jello mold to Superman. But but it's diamonds. It's, oh, a, it's a diamond jello mold. Diamond mold. Yeah. Uh, there's also one I'm reading through right now, an, an old uh, public domain story of a guy called The Whistler who fights crime by whistling. Wait, wait. Uh, it's not a wait, wait. It's just three <laughs> notes that apparently paralyze people. Oh, is one of them the brown note? <laughs> Makes you crap yourself. You know about that, right? Yeah. The brown note. Oh, man. Oh, no. <laughs> there's one. This is, I'll, I'll just tell the story real quick. Uh, yeah. There's a video I saw of like a orchestra playing. Okay. And it's like, it's been like they quiet down and they're getting ready for a big part. You can tell. Sure. And a woman has fallen asleep in the, <laughs> oh, man. In the on. crowd. And so when they kick in with that giant first, like, crash, you hear it. Crash. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh that's great. And it is hilarious. Uh, uh, all right. So there you go. That was uh, Comet the Super Horse's dating life, I guess, is the best way to put it. So uh, can I ask a favor of you? Yeah. Is Jero, Jero the Marboy, is that a thing? He is a I thing. Mean, is there, is I think more he's just... I think he's just a, like, Supergirl love interest. I'll double check right now. <sighs> Uh, do you just like the name Jero the well, Merboy? Jero was an Atlantean from the underwater, underwater Atlantean city of yep. Tritonis. Tritonis, where the inhabitants, and then there's an ad. Oh, it does say 1950s to 1986. Oh. I wonder if he died because 86 is no. All right, his he his first appearance was in Action Comics 269. Yeah, and his last appearance was in Action Comics 311. Okay. I don't know if he. Uh, I'm just saying, you know. You want me to? I Jero the Mer Jero. Boy. I, I don't. I haven't requested a lot of them. The ver notes. The version of Jero Earth One, including all history and corresponding appearance, was erased from existence following the collapse of the original multiverse. Well, no in the shit. His name's Jero the Mer Boy. Crisis. Okay, it is Crisis on Infinite Earths. Yeah. There's so many crises. Like, is this one of the reasons you like comics so much? Just because of the ridiculous. Yes. Just. I so here's the thing, and then everybody has to like play catch up because they have to explain away why this kid's made a fish or this horse can fly or whatever. Yeah, and no, it's like I, somebody built the rules 25 years ago, and now I'm going to bring this character back and I got to figure out how to do it. But there's, yeah, oh, Grant Morrison is absolutely fantastic at yeah. doing that. Like when he did Batman, yeah, like he brought back, he's very James Gunn in a sense mm -hmm. of where like he took and Alan Moore did too with Miracle Man. Um, but like Grant Morrison brought back like uh, Batmite and yeah, like yeah. the Zorel suit and stuff. Like he took like, hey, this stuff is ridiculous, but if you have mm -hmm. it where it happened, then I'm mm -hmm. gonna use it. Yeah, and it was kind of fun to see that kind of stuff. It's canon. It, I mean, it is. You, yeah. You. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like and uh, spoiler if you haven't read it, um, uh, <laughs> Miracle Man. It's this is Alan Moore's. Either first or one of Alan Moore's first things. I think he did this around the same time he was doing V for Vendetta. Right. Um, but so essentially, to tell the story, Captain Marvel um, had to change his name because of, you know, Marvel Comics and stuff. And so he mm -hmm. changed it just his name and stuff like that. There's an old, uh, there's an old, I guess that really doesn't matter, but there's a uh, old DC, or not DC, a uh, uh, UK character called Mr. Miracle. Not Mr. Miracle, Mr. Marvel, okay. who is a copy then of Shazam, worked the same way. Sure. But it's like when they ran out of, sh you know, Shazam comic, they made their own bootleg kind of version and yeah. they called him Mr. Marvel. Okay. Um, so Mr. Marvel works the same way of where he like says a name and he's transformed into a, okay. you know, thing. So what Alan Moore did that I think was great is like he used the stuff when he brought back that character from who it hadn't been used since the fifties when he did it in the eighties mm -hmm. is he then used the whole, like that stuff still happened mm. from before. It was like a, just because you see where the guy who was Mr. Marvel forgot he was Mr. Marvel. He's, <laughs> Whoops. Well, no. And so he's in a situation, like he hadn't used it in so long. Oh, I see. And so like, you know, he thinks that it's like he, strange dreams time to time, but something yeah. happens and he transforms and then it all comes back to him. Like Moon Knight. 
Yeah. Kind of. But then there's also like the story of where. Which I didn't really understand. But yeah. Yeah. It's. Yeah. But then you also have one of where you find that um, it dives into the fact that in like Shazam, Billy Badson is a kid still Mm -hmm. and Shazam's his version. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's like a kid Marvel that was around back then. Mm. And what Alan Moore does is so like he's been stuck as the being for these 30 years that he turns back and you don't even think about like that's an actual kid there that has to deal with. Like the kid has aged yeah. during, the, you know, and it's yeah. just like it takes things that are canon and it makes it work so in smart, hmm. cool ways. And so I love things like that. And then I also love like this of how it can just go completely off the rails and how ridiculous. That is, these were super off. The it's rails. why I love. Do you? I love watching bad movies. Yeah, yeah, some of them, some of them. Yeah, I've seen a lot. That's so. true. Some of them are really bad. Some of them. Yeah. But so it's it's essentially like that, and I also love the fact of how I don't like I don't like movies that are supposed to be good that are bad. I like movies that that intentionally were made with small budgets. And, oh, that you know, know that, that kind yeah, of yeah, stuff. Yeah, 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 and just like buy into it. Oh yeah, no, yeah, that's I that's like the that. best. Yeah, like uh, Deathbed, the bed that eats. Well, the yeah, that and any of the trauma films and stuff oh, like that. Yeah. You know that kind of stuff. Yeah. The hands of yeah. hands of what is well, that one? Hands toxic of Avenger and oh, Toxic Avenger. Yeah, Surf Nazis or whatever it was. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, so that does it for this week's episode. Uh, next week, you can turn in for another fantastic. And yeah, probably man. absolutely ridiculous look into the world of comics. As always, Mike, thank you yeah, for doing glad this to be with back. me. For everybody listening, thank you as always for listening. And glad until, you lived through your dry humping. That makes it sound like <laughs> I was. It does. It sounds terrible. It does. All right. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs> Got a gun. Wheat, wheat. Frozen, Frozen, heroes, gonna tell you about Frozen, Frozen, heroes, gonna tell you about This has been a Rogue Media Podcast.